join this session. He is the chief guest of the closing session. Uh, actually, we are waiting for our uh, honorable chair and co-chair. As soon as the chair and co-chair will start, uh, join, we will start the session. Good day, everyone. Uh, now we will start the technical session nine on monsoon and tropical meteorology. This session will be chaired by Professor Dr. U.C. Mohanty, School of Art, Ocean and Climate Science, IIT Bhuvaneshwar, India. And co-chair of this session is Professor Dr. Shomeshwar Dash, Head, Department of Atmospheric Science, Central University of Rajasthan, Azmer, India. Our honorable chair doesn't uh, join yet. So I will request honorable co-chair to start and conduct the session. Before starting the session, I would like to request uh, session co-chair to evaluate all the presenters according to the prescribed format and send us as soon as possible. Thank you all. Sir, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, now, am I audible now? Yes, sir, you are. Okay, okay yeah. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, well, it is about 7.30 here in the evening, and in Bangladesh, it is 8 o'clock, somewhere it is in the morning. Uh, Professor Mohanty probably will join shortly, I hope. Uh, we can start straight. And... Uh, as already announced by Javed, uh, we have got uh, a presentation of 20 minutes. Uh, so please try to st skip, uh, stick to the time. And I call upon the first speaker to start the presentation, uh, Dr. Raghu Nandan Raman and Nachiketa Acharya. Will you both? Present the paper together, uh, share the timing, or will you, who will present the paper? I'll be presenting the paper. Uh, you will share the, the time, right? Both of you will present, yeah? Oh, no, I'll be presenting and I'll okay. share my screen. Fine, fine, fine. So please start. Okay. So, hi, everyone. My name is Ravinandan Raman, and I'm a 12th class student in West Windsor Plainsboro High School South uh, in New Jersey. And I'm working under the supervision of Dr. Nachikita Acharya um, on this project. And I want to thank BND for the data that we used for this project. And I want to also thank IRI for this wonderful opportunity to present. So today we'll be talking about the extreme uh, urban flooding in Dhaka, Bangladesh. And so in case anyone uh, doesn't know where Dhaka is, I think most of us know, but uh, just to start, Dhaka is the capital of Bangladesh. It's a very densely populated area and it's home to over 18 million people. The problem is uh, when there's a heavy rain, the city is devastated and it looks like many of these pictures here. And that's the problem. So on this note, we started to investigate further on the urban flooding in Bangladesh. So this year is especially different because there's a double threat. And this is due to the COVID-19 pandemic and also the urban flooding that is there every year. And so this really makes the situation a lot worse. Here you can see a few newspaper cuttings 
And according to the IFRC, more than 4 million people are at risk of food insecurity and disease because of the flooding in Bangladesh. So this is really becoming a big problem for the people there. So we got uh, the daily rainfall data from BMD. Um, and so we plotted it for the 2020 rainfall. And it's interesting to see how there are a couple of peaks right before the monsoon time period. And also there are a couple, uh, there's a really extreme rainfall value in the beginning of July. So on that note, we decided to study these extreme rainfall events in Dhaka. So we started with some basic indices from the ETCCDI, and there were 27 available indices, but we only chose these three because they deal directly with the magnitude of the rainfall, which is what we want to study. So the first index was the Rx one day, the maximum one day precipitation amount per year, Rx five day, maximum five uh, five-day consecutive precipitation amount per year, and R95P, the annual total precipitation greater than 95th percentile. So initially, we plotted the violent plots for each index. And this is because the violent plot can give us two main features. The first is it includes everything of the box plot. So it, it can tell us the median, the interquartile range, and the outliers. But in addition to that, the violent plot enables us to see the distribution of the data. And this is really helpful for us because now we can see that there's this third peak in the RX1 day data set. So our question was, why is there a third peak? To find out, we plotted the histogram and we do see some type of extreme values between 300 to 350 millimeters. Next, we plotted the scatter plot and that really confirmed our suspicion that yes, there is some, uh, there are these two out, uh, extreme values and initially we thought that uh, these two are outliers, but then we did some fact checking and we found that they're not actually outliers. These are events that happen uh, in the real world. So the first one uh, was in September 14, 2004. And the second one was in July 28, 2009. So it's amazing how these two real incidents have such a big effect on the entire pattern of the data. Now, the problem is um, with our data set, it was really hard to fit any type of statistical model or distribution because of these two extreme values. So let's move on to the analysis. So we started off by plotting each index over time using the scatter plot, and we plotted the line of best fit for each. However, doing this, we found no statistical significance. But then we decided to uh, bisect the data by decade, so we turned it into a decadal plot and created a line of best fit for each one. From this, we actually determined that there was one time period uh, between 2005 to 2014 in the R95, and that was in fact significant. So that's interesting, right? Because when we examine the entire data set as a whole, there's no real significance, but when we uh, zoom in on each decade, we find that some of them are significant. So we also used um, the Mankendall test to find the direction of the change, and we use the send slope to give the estimate of the magnitude of the change. So now that we've understood the characteristics of each index, our next question was, how can we project or predict the return levels in the future? So just to give some background onto the concepts of return level and return period, here are some examples. So one thing you could ask is, what is the frequency of such a heavy flood event? Or what are the characteristics of the 100 years flood? So using this, um, up till now, we have only shown the violin plot, the scatter plot, and the histogram. Um, but this doesn't give us any information about the future, because our data set is only from 1975 to 2019. So in order to learn about the future, we have to fit a probability distribution onto our existing data. And for this, we turn to extreme value analysis. So why are we using this um, extreme value analysis? So the problem is we have this uh, famous normal distribution, but the normal distribution is great at estimating values close to the mean, as you can see. The problem arises when we want to analyze those values that are far away from the mean, like this. So when you see this uh, distribution, 
uh, of the daily rainfall in uh, Bangladesh, it seems like there's almost no values uh, at the end, maybe after 180 millimeters. But when we zoom in, we see that there's this entire distribution and that's exactly what we want to analyze. So this is where extreme value theory comes in. It can help us to create a distribution just for these extreme values so that we do our analysis. So there are two main approaches to extreme value theory. The first one is block maximum method. And the second one is the peaks over threshold. So now let's talk about how each one works. So here's a great analogy for understanding the extreme value theory. So imagine that you're uh, in a company and you're studying the losses over time for the company. So here we have in the x-axis the time uh, and the losses in dollars on the y-axis. Now the question is, how do we select which values are the extreme values or for the company, which are the extreme losses? So the first method is the block maximum method. In this method, we divide the time into even intervals, as you can see here. And then from each interval, we select the maximum value. And by putting all of these together, we uh, create a distribution of all the extreme values. The other method is the peaks over threshold method. In this, we set uh, a sort of bar or threshold and every value above that threshold is considered an extreme value. So these are two methods of generating those extreme values. In our study, we use the block maxima approach because those extreme, uh, extreme precipitation indices that we mentioned earlier, they have the uh, yearly model built in. So it made sense to use the block maxima method. So just to uh, give a little bit of background onto the GEV, it has three parameters, the location, scale, and shape. The scale, uh, the shape function is very sensitive because depending on the value, either positive, negative, or zero, the shape of the distribution can change. So now we're talking about a distribution, but what if the data is non-stationary or maybe it's stationary, but has some type of seasonal pattern? So how can we modify the GEV in this case? So we found three areas where the GEV can be modified based off of the data. So the first is the trends, and this is any type of either decreasing or increasing trend in the data. The second is cycles. And in our data set, cycles didn't really make sense because all the extreme rainfall events usually happen during the monsoon. So that's during the uh, majority of the year. So there's not really some sort of cycle. And the last is covariates. So with covariates, we're analyzing the impact of those large scale features on the extremes. So for example, we started by examining the effect of the El Nino Southern Oscillation on the extreme urban flooding in Bangladesh. So we started off um, by this and we used different models. So initially we started with the original model, uh, which is called the stationary model. Then bit by bit and one by one, we added a bit of non-stationarity. For example, first we added non-stationarity over location in terms of trend. Then we did the same thing for scale. And then finally, we combined the trend over location and scale. And then the same thing we did for the covariates of Nino 3.4 and SOI. So in total, we ended up building eight different models. So given these models, we want to know which one is the best fit of the data. And that's why we calculated the AIC and BIC values. So the AIC is a measure of the goodness of fit and is the log likelihood of the parameters of the fit. So essentially a low value of AIC means that it's a better fit. For RX1 and RX5, you can see that model one or the original uh, model had the lowest AIC. So it is the model that fits the data the best. However, for R95P, it's a bit different because the AIC of model one and AIC of model five are really close. They're probably off by 0 0.01 uh, values. So from this, we can see that um, the because model five is the covariate of Nino 3.4, we can see that Nino uh, clearly impacts R95. However, we also calculated the, the BIC value. And by doing so, we found that the model one had the lower BIC. 
So that confirms that the stationary GEV is the best for all of these indexes. So here are some of the parameters of the distribution. And the most interesting part is the shape. Um, so for Rx1 and Rx5, it's positive. But for R95, it's negative. And so we wanted to find out the reason for why it's a, a different sign. So that's why we plotted the estimated and the empirical distribution for each. And here you can see that for Rx1 and Rx5, the tail is pretty heavy. But for R95, it's a short tail. So this explains that how the shape parameter is changing based off of the data. Also for Rx1, the empirical data has a sort of a peak at the end, but the model doesn't really account for that. So for this reason, we think that the model is not as good as we want it to be. Then we plotted the quantiles from the distribution and the, and the empirical. So for Rx1 and Rx5, we can see that the it, it is a good fit up till a certain point, maybe up till 200 or 210. After that, it's not a very good fit. And same with Rx5, it, it starts to go a little bit off after a certain point. And this is because, especially in Rx1, there were those two extreme values that we mentioned earlier. But for R95, it's a good fit throughout. So now that we fit the data, we want to go back to our original goal, which is to calculate the return period. So based off of the distributions before, we calculated the return period and the return level. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the return period. And so using this, we plotted, uh, these are the plots that we got. So each plot shows us the return period of each incident from 20 to 200 years on the x-axis and the rainfall level on the y-axis. The black solid line is the estimate and the shaded region is the confidence interval. So you can see how each, um, each index looks, has the same general shape. It's, kind of upwards sloping for all of them. Um, but the only difference is the magnitude. So Rx1 is the lowest, R Rx5 is the middle, and R95P is the highest. So although they are all increasing um, in the same way, there's no abrupt increase or decrease. They, they basically follow a steady path. And so if you see, uh, for, for example, the 60 and 80 years flood, there's not much of a difference in terms of the magnitude of the rainfall, but when we zoom out and look at the entire from 20 to 200, we can see that there is a sharp increase. So to conclude, uh, we found that the simple GEV is the best because there's no relationship between the urban flooding and those large scale variables like uh, ENSO and SOI. And so overall, we wanted to study those extreme rainfall events that caused the urban flooding in Bangladesh. And so we uh, used different GEV models from simple to complex to estimate the return period of all the indices. So we have a few plans for the future. First, we want to examine each decade as a sub-interval and closely analyze the effects of those. Um, because in, initially, when we did bisect the uh, data into decades, we did find that each one behaves a little bit differently, and so that's why we want to examine them more closely. We also found that uh, Nino 3.4 and SOI kind of have a similar effect, so we want to combine them into one model. Additionally, we want to do uh, the same study for all of the stations in Bangladesh, um, and also conduct some spatial extreme value analysis, because the Northeast and Southeast of Bangladesh have a lot of floods and extreme rainfall events. So we wanna see the distribution of extreme rainfall events overall for the entire country. And so we'll test different GEVs um, models and see which is working and what's not working. And we also wanna see the return level. So thank you all for listening. Um, if you have any feedback or questions, you can let us know. Sir, we can't hear you, sir. Well, uh, now I've unmuted. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Raman, uh, for a very nice presentation. Uh, now the floor is open for questions. We can have one or two questions if anybody has. 
Dr. Das, can I say something? Dr. Chiketa? Yeah, I mean, the floor is open for questions. So can, is, is anybody having any question? Uh, can I ask question? Yes, please. Uh, thank you, President Trar. Also, thank you, Musical Ji. Very nice uh, work. Uh, actually, uh, my not question is my share. Uh, you have shown here only two extreme value above 300 above. I think that another extreme value also I got uh, 1956, uh, 13 July. This extreme value was 326 millimeter in. So I think that if you add this value, I think return level maybe uh, we, we can get uh, more uh, fruitful or more accurate result. I think that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I think we, we'll look to include that in the future. Um, but for this study, our data was only from 1975 to 2019. So it wasn't there, but we, we want to expand the data in the future to get a better look. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Fine. Uh, we can move to the next presentation uh, because we have very tight uh, time schedule. Uh, for the next presentation, I'd like to call uh, Monjila Rizwan. Uh, the title of her talk is Threat Analysis of Tropical Cyclone Development over Bay of Bengal during Southwest Monsoon. So, is Mr. Rizwan there? Are you available? Mr. Mojila Rizwan, are you there? Seems the author is absent. So maybe she will, or he will try to join later. We can move on to the next paper uh, to uh, there is some Hello, I am here. That, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now, now we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't see you. Uh, Thank yeah. you. So, oh, okay. Please, yeah, yeah. So, yours is the next presentation. Close yours. So, I like to start my uh, presentation. Um, yes. My, uh, um, may I know whether my screen is, uh, presentation is on? Can you see my presentation? Uh, your, your share of your screen is not yet visible. Not yet. Okay, okay. now okay? Yeah, it's coming up, yep, yes. So it's okay now? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, respected uh, session chair, uh, co-chair and uh, participants, uh, Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Uh, let me first uh, express my thanks uh, to the organizers for arranging this wonderful seminar and also for selecting my presentation. So I'm Muin Commander Monjila Rizwan, uh, presently working in Bangladesh Air Force in Metrological Branch. So as the time is very limited without uh, detailed introduction, let me start my presentation, trade analysis of tropical cyclone development over Bay of Bengal during Southwest monsoon. So the aim of my presentation is to uh, analyze the trade associated with tropical cyclone development during Southwest monsoon over Bay of Bengal. The sequence I'm going to follow is shown on the screen. So uh, you can see on the screen uh, uh, the most uh, brown shaded area uh, and the area within the circle that is Bay of Bengal. It is a, it's my study area of study. And uh, as per uh, in a research paper, the global climatology of tropical cyclone by Hamish Ramsey, it is stated that only 4% of global tropical cyclone formed in North Indian Ocean and among them Bay of Bengal experience five to six times more cyclones than in Arabian Sea. So on an average, about five to six tropical cyclones formed in Bay of Bengal every year. 
though the percentage is very less, but it should be kept in mind that uh, that what uh, some of the deadliest cyclones, like 70s Bola cyclone and 91 super cyclone, was formed in this Bay of Bengal. So uh, cyclones uh, mostly formed in transition period, we all know, but not uncommon in southeast monsoon also. Uh, and uh, we all know that southeast monsoon uh, comprises the month June, July, August, and September. For threat analysis, first trend analysis is done uh, about my data and methodology. So trend frequency and track of tropical cyclone analyzed by 129 years data of best um, best track data of cyclone year class reports and bulletin of India Meteorological Department. Among the cyclogenesis factors, this paper also analyzed vertical uh, wind shear as in the book of Southwest Monsoon by YP Rao. Uh, it is considered as the major factor that limit the intensification of tropical cyclone into tropical storm into tropical cyclone. So to analyze the uh, vertical wind shear, we ha I have analyzed the vector wind of 850 millibar and 200 millibar by uh, uh, National uh, National Center for Environmental Prediction Reanalysis Tools. And particle wind shear is calculated by vector subtraction. And for this one, online interactive tool is used and the link of interactive tool is given at the bottom. Madden-Julian oscillation are Madden uh, Julian oscillation phases are analyzed by using uh, uh, phase diagram of Australia, Australian Government Bureau of Metallurgy. And for trade analysis, the newspaper reports from internet mainly are used. The rainfall and wind data of Bangladesh Meteorological Department and Bangladesh Air Force Meteorological Squadrons are also used as supportive data. On this slide, you can see the mean seasonal wind of 850 millibar and uh, 200 millibar. And during southwest monsoon at 18, 850 millibar over North Bay, wind remained southwesterly, but over Central and South Bay, wind remained westerly. Whereas in 200 millibar, wind remained easterly uh, over whole Bay of Bengal. Uh, so, particle uh, uh, wind shear about particle wind shear is strong, that is more than 15 meter per second vertical wind shear passes in between 850 millibar and 200 millibar over Bay of Bengal. And vertical wind shear of value less than 10 meter per second is considered as weak and 10 to 15 meter per second is considered as moderate. So in this study, except uh, severe cyclonic storm of 1997, all case studies taken from 2001 to 2019. In the uh, slide, you can see the Madden Julian uh, oscillation phases over defined oceanic area. And we know that there are eight phases, and phases three and four are favorable for convective convection and development of tropical storms over Bay of Bengal. So let me start my um, uh, another uh, trend analysis, my trend analysis mainly. So on this slide, you can see that from 2001 to 2019, only three cyclonic storms formed over Bay of Bengal. If I summarize my chain analysis from uh, uh, 1891 to 2019, total 1,215 storms, including depression, cyclonic storm, and severe cyclonic storm formed over Bay of Bengal. And among this, 523 for, uh, intensified into cyclonic storm and severe cyclonic storm. And among them, 150 formed during southwest monsoon, that is June, July, August, September. So if I frame the time or year from 1891 to 1900, in these 10 years, frequency per year is 6.1. From 19, 90, uh, 1901 to 1950, in these 50 years, total 5.86 storm formed over, uh, sorry, frequency per year is 5.86. And from 1951 to 2000, uh, during southwest monsoon, frequency per year is 4.36. And from 2001 to 2019, in these 10 years, frequency per year is 1.94. So the frequency is decline, declining. And not only for storm, for severe cyclonic storm and for cyclonic storm also. I have done eight uh, case studies. Among them, four are occurrence of tropical cyclone over Bay of Bengal. For this, the tracks of this storm are done by 
uh, data from India Meteorological Department. This is the uh, MGO phase diagram of Australian Bureau of Meteorology and particle uh, vector wind, vector wind analysis. Upper one is for 850 millibars and uh, uh, bottom one is for 200 millibars, and here also vertical wind shear also calculated. So in this way, I have done eight case studies. If I summarize my case studies, um, you can see that among uh, eight case studies, four was of tropical cyclones, and among these four tropical cyclones, one, one intensified into severe cyclonic storm, which happened during 1997, and in the, uh, in the among four, in three tropical cyclone or, or occurrence cases, weak particle wind shear favor further intensification of deep depression into tropical cyclone. In case of deep depression, I found moderate to strong particle wind shear in between 850 millibar to 200 millibar. And but in case of depression, um, the particle wind shear was weak and all uh, factors were favorable. Why? If you see that uh, the depression of 2018, June 2018, formed very close to post light, and just after 20, within 24 hours, it just made landfall. So it lived very short times, but as all the factors are favorable, that's why uh, it intensified into depression from low to depression and uh, give severe weather. So in every cases of tropical cyclone, abort level anticyclone seen at in uh, anticyclone and reach seen close proximity of the system and favorable maiden Julian oscillation phases with other favorable condition might help any storm in further intensification. So uh, let me uh, uh, now analyze the trait associated with tropical storm. So threat, uh, one of the uh, threat of tropical storm during monsoon or southwest monsoon is torrential rainfall. So uh, one example of the, is deep depression of 10 to 13 June of 2017. And uh, it is uh, one of the fatal disaster which happened southeastern part of Bangladesh that is close to our, my area. And at least 156 people died uh, following flash flood and landslide, uh, landslide in Rangamati, Bandobon, Chattogam district of Bangladesh, along with 14 other in Northeast India caused by torrential rainfall. So uh, the uh, storm which formed over uh, Bay of Bengal affect the, uh, as, uh, not only Bangladesh, also India, Myanmar also. So another example of torrential rainfall and associated with flash flood and mud and landslide is tropical cyclone Komen. Komen uh, is one of the most abnormal and unique cyclone ever developed over Bay of Bengal because of its unique uh, origin of uh, origin of formation and unique track. So Komen also uh, caused um, it cost in 10 days over Chattogram, that is my area, 1,212 millimeter rainfall, which is ex extremely, very extreme. And in Bangladesh, 28 people died from storm caused flash flood and landslide. And not only in Bangladesh, in Northeast India and Eastern India, it killed people, uh, 70 people died uh, because of uh, a flash flood and flooding. In Myanmar, also 27 people were died. A storm surge is another uh, deadly disaster associated with tropical storm. So the surge height of tropical storm depends on cyclone track and is really higher to the uh, right of the track. As the cyclone approaches to land to the north, this wind, the wind associated with tropical storm pile up the uh, water towards uh, the land and uh, reinforce the shallow water because of convergence effect of the system and consequence is that the surge height become more and also in the north of the track it produces negative surge. This table is prepared by multi-purpose cyclone shelter project during 1993 and this uh, table uh, 
calculate the effect of wind velocity on storm surge height and inundation area from coastline. So if the wind velocity of a storm is 195 kilometer per hour, it will create a storm of uh, storm surge of 4.8 meter and it will and it could inundate a uh, four kilometer area from coastline. But when uh, this uh, table is prepared, uh, it, uh, it, it did not consider the effect of new moon, full moon, and emotional tidal height. Um, uh, this is actually a, a storm surge forecast for super cyclone Ampat, which happened few uh, just uh, in this year. And it is uh, forecast is given by Bangladesh Meteorological Department website by web model. So uh, during southwest monsoon time, large volume of water discharge to magma estuary other and other distributors channel. Now, when non-saline water mixed with saline water, it caused increase of volume of water and consequently tidal amplitude are increased. And this study had been done by Rahman and Damen. So uh, you can see in the table during full moon of January, when tidal height is 3.96 meter, but full moon of August, tidal height, normal height had become 5.03 meter. That is increased. So in tidal type book of Bangladesh also shows increase of 50 centimeter to 100 centimeter tidal height during southwest monsoon period. The triangular shape of head bay helps to funnel the seawater push towards the wind, uh, towards the coast and causes further modification, modification of surge. So when storm surge coincides with high tide, the impact will be severe. Again, tide and surge are not linearly additive but interactive. This means that if five meter surge is superimposed on five meter tide, the total height could be more than 10 meter and tides modify surge amplification. One example of storm surge, of course, all tropical cyclone or tropical storm associated with storm surge, I'm giving the just example of tropical cyclone PR. As a depression, this system produced damaging soil along coastal Bangladesh, forcing 12,000 people to evacuate. These are taken from online news report and PR also read 4,82,000 hectares of crop field, hatcheries, and fisheries. Gale wind in last 19 years, I have shown earlier that three, only three tropical cyclone formed of uh, uh, wind speed 30, 35 knots or more. However, during cyclonic storm of, severe cyclonic storm of 1997, uh, this uh, base, that is Potenga Chotogram, BF base Johur at Potenga Chotogram recorded 18 knots wind and just during uh, depression of June 2018, 16 knot gusty wind is recorded. These are also very uh, uh, severe effect of tropical storm. So if I conclude my findings of my study, the frequency rate of subtropical cyclone and all tropical storms over Bay of Bengal during southwest monsoon declining. And only three tropical cyclones developed over Bay of Bengal in the last 19 years, that is from 2001 onwards. So we can expect that the next 20 years, the frequency of tropical cyclone over Bay of Bengal will not be more than three. Weak vertical wind shear might favor further intensification of deep depression into cyclone. In all tropical cyclones, presence of anticyclone or ridge seen in close proximity, tropical cyclone Priyar and tropical cyclone Komen followed an abnormal track, move equatorward, that is towards south, which are uh, really abnormal and favorable maiden Julian oscillation phase with other favorable condition may help in a storm in future intensification. Height at height remains more during southwest monsoon. And if landfall of any storm must with new moon or full moon, then low-lying coastal area might be flooded by sea surge. Storm surge in coastal areas, flash flood, and in hilly areas, flood and water logging in plain land during southwest monsoon destroy standing crop, fisheries, and hatcheries over 1,000 acres of land. And storm surge associated with cyclonic storm or gale force wind 
often become destructive because uh, besides human casualties, it damages houses and kill livestock. So I'm at the end of my presentation. Um, if you have any question, I'm ready to answer. Well, thank you very much, uh, Wing Commander Wanjila Rizwan, for your presentation. The floor is open for question. We have time, so we can have one or two questions from the audience. So, can I have a question, sir? Yes. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Mandan, please. Yeah, this is Dr. Mandan. Thank you, sir, for giving me chance and allowing me to uh, make a question. Actually, this is not a question. Actually, this is uh, a query. Actually, uh, our speaker, that is Monzila, uh, has already covered so many aspects of things. As of my understanding, she has covered in her study the cyclonic disturbances uh, during pre monsoon, monsoon, as well as in uh, post monsoon seasons, also, whatever I found because she has been talking about the cyclone Ampuan, she has been talking about cyclone Komen and some other cyclones. But in the title of her presentation, what I found that threat analysis of tropical cyclone development over the Bay of Bengal during Southwest monsoon. I think uh, this uh, part uh, can needed a slight correction. I think uh, uh, during the months, during the uh, Pre-monsoon, monsoon, as well as post-monsoon season should be there because very less number of cyclonic disturbances are forming um, uh, in the, especially the cyclones are not forming during the southwest monsoon because southwest monsoon is known, very much popularly known in Bangladesh is monsoon. That is the season for June to September period. It, it, did not, it doesn't cover the uh, wide ranges of cyclonic disturbance period from March onward to October and November. So I think I will, I can, may I request to change the title a uh, little bit. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think some misunderstanding there. I have given example of Cyclone Ampan that Bangladesh Meteorological Department is doing a very good job. They are giving storm surge forecast uh, give, uh, by using numerical model. So uh, this storm surge forecast also uh, forecast some threat, threat associated with tropical cyclone. Yes, I have chosen the name or chosen the subject of uh, uh, probability of or threat analysis of cyclone during southwest monsoon because our concept is or perception is that during monsoon season there are no chance of tropical formation of tropical cyclone because in last few years we have very very less. I have shown my in, in my presentation only uh, in that last 19 years, only three cyclonic storms formed over Bay of Bengal. That's why a uh, lot of people got the perception that in Southwest Monsoon, uh, cyclone never formed, but actually it formed and we have a lot of record of uh, Southwest uh, uh, tropical cyclone during monsoon period. In my study, I have analyzed this thing. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Wing Commander Monjila is one. Uh, is there any other question from the floor in the audience? Uh, may I ask a question, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure, Dr. Mohan. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. I am Dr. Mohan Kumar Das. Uh, it is actually a very nice presentation, I should say, because it covers uh, lots of aspects and especially the damage and uh, relevant uh, impact of the weather stream. So I, my question is, uh, already Bangladesh Air Force has a very good numerical weather prediction system. So have you any uh, aim to verify all those events, what you already been shown, to uh, verify with our, uh, compare with the, your NWP results? Okay, Bangladesh Air Force, we are, the map shows that meteorological branch of Bangladesh Air Force actually, uh, covering the aviation meteorology part. Uh, we uh, do a study and uh, we uh, do research, but all related with aviation. Uh, recently, we just induced one, uh, inducted one NWP, but it doesn't, uh, we still don't, we are lagging behind in forecasting uh, tropical cyclone tracking, 
by NWP model, and we are still lagging, uh, lacking in doing research by applying NWP or simulating NWP with real weather events. But we do a study for operational forecasting purpose. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Wing Commander Manjula Rizwan. Now we have to move to the next presentation. Uh, thank you, sir. Sorry, sir, for the interruption. Uh, yeah. Before going forward, I would like to uh, deliver some uh, announcement with the permission of Professor Dr. Shamashad Das. At this moment, I would like to request Professor Dr. Shamashad Das to contact the session as a chair and uh, Dr. Nazmul Hassan from Department of Meteorology. Uh, as a co-chair of the session. Uh, and sorry. we have, uh, with oh. the uh, consultation with the uh, organizing committee, we have made some changes in the program. Uh, uh, as our chief guest, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, uh, will deliver his speech as soon as the three presentations are missed. The remaining schedule will be uh, continued as usual after this piece. So thank you, everyone. Uh, sorry for interruption, sir. Uh, this is Incommander Shamshul. Uh, uh, would you please allow me to uh, talk with Shamshul? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, please, yeah. Uh, sir, uh, uh, this is Incommander Shamshul, sir, from uh, Air Force, sir. I would like to. Uh, uh, congratulate uh, and uh, I'd look, I, I would like to thank all of you uh, for uh, allowing us to present uh, one presentation uh, on Commander Munzila on behalf of uh, Air Force. Thank you very much, sir. This is in Commander Shamsun. Okay. Thank, okay. You thank, you. thank you very much. Yeah. So we go to the last presentation, right? Uh, and the last presentation of this session uh, is by Carlo Montes uh, uh, Najiketa Acharya and SM Kamrun Hassan. The title of the talk is Interannual Variability of Monsoon Onset and Withdrawal in Bangladesh. So, who is going to present? Uh, this is Dr. Carlos Montes. Is he there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, please. Yeah. So now the floor is yours. Okay. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Uh, compartir. I'm trying to share my screen. Okay. But I'm not allowed. Uh, give me one second. Okay. Now? Yep, you can see it. Perfect. It's fine, like this, you can see it. Wonderful. So thank you, good morning here, and good evening there to everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to, to join you and to see some of my friends and the audience here. Uh, my name is Carlo Montes. I work for the International uh, <clears throat> Mason with Improvement Center. I'm based in Mexico, but I used to be based in Bangladesh when I started um, this work and, and, and I got interested at, actually in, the, in all these uh, very um, challenging studies on the monsoon and, and the implications, especially for agriculture. I work for an agricultural research center, so I will present today in this work uh, title and title internal variability of monsoon monsoon and withdrawal in Bangladesh. I will talk about the motivations, objectives, methods, results in terms of spatial and internal patterns, some analysis of drivers of internal variability and some conclusions. Um, well, the motivation is basically the implication of uh, the monsoon timing for agriculture. That's our, our interest. Uh, as a main, the main source, the main supply for wa of water for the Karif rice season, for example, or or 
or the number of uh, of um, of decisions that are made based on the onset of the rainy season, like land preparation or sowing and transplanting dates, but also for consequences uh, for other crops. For example, a late uh, a late uh, withdrawal can uh, have can have consequences on on the performance of wheat during the, the winter wheat. For a, a late withdrawal can have consequences for terminal heat stress for wheat. So it's very relevant the, 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 the timing of the monsoon, but also of uh, some, for example, an, an environmental risk factor. And like this, we can we can list a lot and provide a long list of implications of the monsoon timing. Um, this so the, the, the main goal of this work is to statistically here statistically characterize the the prim primary reg regional patterns of variability in monsoon onset and withdrawal in Bangladesh, and also assess the, inter the, the influence of some large scale tenant connection for their potential use and predictability. So for this, we, we used uh, multiple data sets, uh, starting from shirt precipitation, also BMD stations for, for validation, basically. Um, also, sea surface temperature and, and, and for the Nino to calculate the Nino index and the dipole mode index for to associate the, the monsoon timing with the Indian Ocean dipole, um, and also to see um, the associated circulations. We use the ER5 atmospheric reanalysis of upper circulation and surface circulation. The analysis is based uh, on the on the spatial spatial and internal variability, associated circulations. We perform also a, a statistical grouping, cl clustering basically of uh, monsoon timing to then try to see the relationship at the regional level between monsoon timing and ENSO and IOD. The first uh, thing uh, that uh, we have to think about, it's, uh, is how to define the, the timing, the onset and withdrawal of the monsoon. There are many or multiple definitions for this. We are interested in agriculture, so we don't consider circulation, but only precipitation. If we take this graph, this is a random year of uh, a, a station from Bangladesh that I don't remember, but we see this very, very seasonal, uh, high seasonality in the, in the precipitation. Um, but every every um, definition of monsoon onset and timing has to take into into consideration uh, the onset, but also the possible false or the filtering or the possible presence of false onset to be filtered. And for example, when we have a dry spell be between between a, a period of precipitation, and similar for the retreat. So in, in our case, we used. Um, a definition um, that was uh, proposed by Still Reeve et al. in a work uh, that they performed in Bangladesh. Um, they, they took uh, precipitation from BMD and they analyzed uh, the, the, the behavior, I could say, that of this of time series of precipitation and they defined a set of uh, patterns. They identified a set of patterns of uh, precipitation um, to define the monsoon onset that withdrawal from an agricultural perspective. Main results, so these are the main features of uh, monsoon onset and withdrawal. And on the left, we see the, the, the climatology of monsoon onset and here the climatology of uh, monsoon withdrawal. Uh, we see a general pattern of propagation from the Northeast to the Southwest. Um, also, we see that the dates at the country average at the country level average from late April in the northeast to early July in the south or the, the west. Um, and for the withdrawal, we see we see a kind of uh, opposite pattern of west east propagation from uh, and dates concentrate basically in October, and with an interannual variability in this case. Uh, um, the, the standard deviation, internal the standard deviation that is quite similar for onset and withdrawal. This is the these are the time series of uh, country average onset and withdrawal. And the, in, in, in a, again in a country average they vary from and about one month of uh, in the 
in the onset of withdrawal with no correlation. If we take this, it's purely a statistical, from an, in a statistical sense, there's no correlation between the time, country average uh, and monsoon onset of withdrawal. So we can say there is no connection between both phenomena. Uh, but when we see, go to regions, we see some, some, some covariability over the west areas of the country. Not, not trying to, to see, for example, if there is any physical relationship, but from a statistical point of view, this can be useful, for example, for a statistical uh, forecasting or predictability. Um, this is a, these are the results of uh, an empirical orthogonal function, so PCA or the spatial, um, the spatial patterns of the PC, principal components analysis. Uh, we see that the for the onset, the, the, the first uh, EOF explains the 23%, and it's uh, characterized by positive values in the country and some negative, negative values here. So it's a kind of opposite uh, behavior of the first PC for, between the Northeast region and the rest of the country. Very similar pattern for the, for the withdrawal with different trends, the, the dots show that the correlation between um, the significant correlation between the PC and, and, and the grid of the precipitation product. So we see that this pattern shows a negative trend, which means it's a, it's a pattern representing kind of a earlier um, monsoon and later and, and the opposite for the, for the withdrawal. Uh, and yes, and, and we see here the opposite the opposite behavior between the Northeast and the rest of the country may be associated with the uh, earlier rainfall that are not, that not monsoon circulation, not monsoon precipitation. So maybe their behavior is different. And we saw the, the we analyzed the, the, the associated circulation with monsoon onset and withdrawal, but uh, taking uh, different classes of uh, onset and withdrawal in terms of uh, country average dates or early, mid, and late, just taking the first, second, and third thirds of the of the of the, um, the um, distribution of, of, of country average dates. And this is the circulation, upper circulation and surface circulation for early um, onset, mid, and late. If we see the surface circulation on the, at the bottom, we see that for the three categories, we have this the, the very well known south uh, component, dominant south component of wind. But if we go to the upper level, air, both early and mid shows west com dominant component. And for late, uh, for late onset, we see that this, the, the, the south component is full developed. So both in upper circulation and surface circulation. And also we see in the, in the color here in the country in Bangladesh, the associated, the composite of associated, associated precipitation. So from this, from this analysis, we see that the late onset showed the full developed south, south uh, component of wind and also a stronger precipitation for during, during late onset. Similar, but opposite for withdrawal and, in, and surface early, mid and late show the south component, weaker, weaker winds for, for the late one. For upper, we see also for early, mid, the south component, but for late, we see that the, 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 the west component of wind is, is, is developed and precip associated precipitation is much, much lower. Later to see, now to see the, if there is any relationship between between teleconnections in this as like ENSO and IoT. We perform first a clustering, um, a statistical grouping of monsoon onset and withdrawal. These are the groups that we identified that goes from, from earlier dates to later dates from the North, uh, East and Southwest. Similar, but less variable groups of uh, monsoon withdrawal. So. This can, be, this can be a kind of conclusion saying that the variability of onset is higher than withdrawal and in a spatial sense. Uh, and, and we analyze the correlations between ENSO and IOD indices for these groups, for individual groups, for single groups. So the pattern is not that clear, unfortunately. 
we found some significant correlations. This is the correlation and this is the group. For example, in this case, we have a significant positive correlation between ENSO and, and, and the onset date for group four, which represent this the southwest area of the country. And for, for the withdrawal for the group one, that is in the north, and some correlation, significant correlation for IOD and withdrawal again for group one. So the pattern is not clear, but maybe in a region for, for some regions, we can, we, can, we can continue exploring the relationship, uh, the statistical relationship between monsoon timing and uh, teleconnections like ENSO and IOD. So some conclusions is the, that, well, we can say that is the, there is a significant spatial and temporal variability in monsoon timing in Bangladesh. Uh, the bulk of the monsoon is uh, onset is in May and June uh, for withdrawal in September and early October with, with an opposite propagation and the monsoon from westward, uh, westward propagation and the, and the withdrawal eastward. Uh, the circulation analysis show that there is a different, uh, different uh, circulation, again, um, associated to onset and withdrawal when we take air from earlier to late uh, dates. And also that uh, the monsoon timing and IOD is in, well, our relationship is not that clear, but, but with, if we go so for, if we can further explore the regional um, relationship for at the regional scale of uh, teleconnections and onset, maybe we can, we can find some relationships that can be used for, for statistical forecasting, but um, it seems that we should include more, more predictors like um, uh, uh, circulation anomalies or to explore the relationship with other indices or regions of uh, sea surface temperature. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Carlos Montes, for your interesting presentation. As announced earlier, uh, right after your presentation, uh, uh, Professor Maksud. Sir, uh, sir uh, may I interrupt now? The session is open for question. Uh, after question session, okay. uh, then Saru will give uh, his space. And, uh, Right. So, the door is open for question. Question from the audience, please. May I ask a question, please? Sure, sure. Hi, um, I was uh, uh, interesting. You, you showed at some point that there was no correlation between the interannual variability of onset and uh, retreat. Did I, uh, did I get that right? And, uh, yes, at the country and, uh, level, the country, the country average uh, onset and withdrawal are not related. The correlation is zero. That's and, what uh, that's what I showed in the time series. And but at the regional, if we go to when we analyze the, the grids of the product, we see that in the west area, the correlation can be high. But uh, yes, it's only a a, a statistical, you know. Meaning uh, the relationship, not not physical. I were, we are not uh, we, we didn't analyze any circulation or oh, some okay. physical okay. factors, but uh, but just just statistical because for statistical um, forecasting sometimes the, 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 what we see in the numbers can be can be used. So that was the the idea of that analysis. Country level no, but for some regions there are some some correlations, significant correlations. Okay, and just just a, uh, just follow up. It just is that what you see in the the two EUFs two being so similar, is is reflecting this regional connection? Maybe it. Uh, yes, actually, the, the UF uh, shows that there is a. Um, I, but the yield, it, I feel that the, it feels that I feel like the EUF shows basically the behavior between the country, and the yeah. northeast region. Because the northeast Silet, that region, it's, it's, it's a bit different, in the, especially in the onset. There are some rainfall there that, that in, that, at the, in April and May are not associated with the monsoon circulation. So it's, okay. a, it's, a, it's a bit different. So that's what the EOF analysis showed. 
maybe we should filter that to see, to, I mean, filter in, in terms of just go within the, the monsoon season to see if we can find some, some other patterns that can be useful for predictability. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, is there any other question? Yes, please. May I have one uh, just yeah. uh, idea? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Carlo, for your interest on in agriculture and also the forecasting and monsoon pattern in Bangladesh. So can I request to you to have some message to the growers, especially as you work in cement, so for the maize growers in Bangladesh, so what would be your message on the basis of this kind of monsoonal pattern in Bangladesh? For the maize growers? Yes, for the maize growers, as you are working in cement. So what would be the yes. message? Mm. <laughs> no, like, like, uh, specific <laughs> messages for the maize growers. I can yes. have messages for the for the, yes. for as the you meteorologist. Know, <laughs> yes. As you know, maize is going to go, already established as a second crop next to rice. So, what would be the message for the maize growers in Bangladesh? Um, I don't have any recommendation because. Uh, the objective of this work is basically to put in evidence that is that is something that we we should continue studying. You know, not only for predictability, but for the for the understanding of uh, and the implications of the monsoon timing for, for uh, um, in Bangladesh for different crops and the variability along with the country that is quite high. So. And I, I can't. Uh, I don't feel comfortable like trying to 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 recommend something to give a message to farmers because because the idea the idea is to to have that in the future. For that, where or the main uh, uh, a message could be that that we are working to try to have, for example, a um, a predict uh, some system of for. for for prediction of the monsoon timing, but uh, we don't have. Yet. We are exploring that from the not only for the meteorological perspective that there is a lot of work and BMD and IMD many people have a lot of results, but from agriculture, from agriculture there are not many many works in the literature, for example, uh, but we are trying to 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 contribute to the area to the connection between what happens. In, in, in the atmosphere and the implications on the land surface in terms of crop performance. Yes. That's what I can say now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Might be your. I hope, I hope maybe next next conference I will share. Yeah. Our uh, event. <laughs> your information might have uh, uh, to use uh, to agro materialist uh, how to grow and when to grow, how to manage. I think uh, also, we have to now. Very, very yeah, no, I I don't know, delicate we, decision. We have to stop the discussion now because uh, Pro Vice Chancellor has to deliver his speech. So we have to stop the discussion now. And after the speech of the Pro Vice Chancellor, maybe we can conclude the session. That. Is that right, Zabin? Thank you, Professor Dr. Shamshad Dasa. Distinguished guest, we are at the end of the two days international conference on meteorology and climate science 2020. For closing ceremony, Professor Dr. A.S.M. Maksud Kamal, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Dhaka, is present as a chief guest. Now I would like to request our respected professor, Dr. A.S.M. Maksud Kamal, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Dhaka, to deliver his speech as a chief guest. Professor Dr. A.S.M. Maksud Kamal, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Dhaka. Uh, thank you, and thanks to all uh, to join in this international conference. As I know, this international conference is going on last <clears throat> two days. That is, Easter date has been inaugurated by our 
Honorable Vice Chancellor, and today is the concluding day, and this is the concluding session. Uh, uh, we have with us uh, many distinguished guests from home and abroad and participants. I would like to offer my thanks to Professor Tohi Darushi, the Chairman of the Department, uh, to organize such an event engaging uh, experts from home and abroad uh, in one hand. On the other hand, in this concluding session, I enjoyed three uh, presentation and two presentation, as I understand, that has been delivered from uh, outside of the country. One presentation from inside country from our uh, Navy and another two presentation has been delivered from outside of the country, particularly addressing <coughs> the monsoonic uh, patron and the meteorological aspect uh, of Bangladesh. Uh, this is my privilege as well as I, I do feel proud to be uh, a chief guest in this event. Department of Meteorology, you know, this is a newly established department in the University of Dhaka. When I was the Dean of the Faculty of Earth and Environmental Sciences, at the time from my end, we have initiated to establish this department and finally this department established back in 2016. And by now the department uh, has grown as a, a very smart department, uh, having a technological achievement, ha having all sort of technology, uh, having the all sort of instrument and devices in the department. And uh, World Bank also collaborating with the department to equip the department uh, uh, to address the challenges uh, of climatic events as well as, uh, as well as the atmospheric sciences. Uh, this uh, conference within the pandemic time give a lot of opportunity with very minimum cost we got very distinguished uh, guests from abroad. So this is huge advantage for us. Though COVID confined us within our home, within our working places with a lot of restrictions. As I came to know that conference comprised of uh, nine uh, technical sessions uh, addressing the monsoon and tropical meteorology uh, thus, the previous session, which already been concluded, address monsoon and tropical meteorology, hydrometeorology, severe weather application of technology in meteorology, climate changes, and future climatic projection. So, all these are the applied branches of meteorology and quite relevant to Bangladesh. Uh, uh, and you know, the present government of Bangladesh is very much, very much keen. Uh, particularly uh, uh, to study the climate changes as well as to study the uh, other sort of atmospheric uh, sciences because uh, Bangladesh is a low-lying country, you know, this is the riverine country and Bangladesh experience almost every year, uh, you can say the flood or cyclone or other hydrometeorological disaster. Uh, from that viewpoint, such study, such department, the loan department of the country, this is very much important one. And under the leadership of Professor Tohida Rashid, the department is growing very fast with uh, technological advancement. And this conference engaged uh, uh, scientists from United States, from United Kingdom, I have seen David Last year, uh, we had international seminar and David attended in our seminar from University of Reading. And thanks David to join in this conference. Uh, 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 from India, from Nepal, and also from uh, other countries as well as the institu institutions from home and uh, abroad, particularly many institute, uh, relevant institute from our country uh, attended in the conference and present paper. Uh, 37 uh, abstract I have seen uh, in the digital version of the abstract. And all the abstract uh, is very much promising and relevant to uh, Bangladesh aspect. 
uh, uh, and you know, uh, the University of Dhaka uh, is going to enter into its 100 years anniversary next year. Our objective in the coming year is to develop our collaboration and cooperation with the uh, distinguished university, with the very renowned university from uh, abroad. So it's my uh, personal opinion in, and it's my personal interest to invite you who are from abroad to engage your collaboration and cooperation with the University of Dhaka, particularly with the Department of Disaster Science and with particularly with the Department of uh, Meteorology. Uh, Bangladesh government is putting a lot of interest in the area of meteorology and climate change and uh, uh, you, you know, Bangladesh government developed a Delta Plan 2100 with particular uh, consideration of the, of the climatic issues, uh, atmospheric issues, natural disaster, etc. And Bangladesh has been uh, segmented into six uh, hotspot uh, based on the uh, climatic aspect uh, of the of Bangladesh or the various geographic part of the country. So it means that the, the development and climatic aspect or development and meteorological aspect is uh, directly involved uh, for sustainable development. And in order to address that one, uh, the Sheikh Hasina's government, the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Sheikh Hasina, by her direct uh, engagement and by her direct leadership and instructions, this Delta plan has been developed. And this Delta plan is uh, almost in every cases or every hotspot aspect is related to the Department of Meteorology, disaster and other uh, climatic phenomena. So from that viewpoint, I hope this department in near future or uh, in the coming days will also organize same nature of uh, international conference uh, and will show us how development and climatic issues are directly related in order to address the sustainable development in a low-lying country like Bangladesh. Addressing, <clears throat> so saying this couple of words, I would like to my talk here because I am sorry I could not attend uh, uh, further with you uh, because I have another business outside and I have to go out from my residence right now. Uh, I hope uh, this uh, session will continue further and we will see some fruitful uh, suggestion uh, uh, how to, uh, how to uh, cash this uh, conference and how to materialize this conference uh, to address the uh, uh, climatic aspect to address the atmospheric aspect to address the climate change to address the natural disaster uh, in our country. So thanks organizer, number of organize, uh, organization I came to know support this conference, for example, uh, uh, this is the Department of Geography and Environment Director of Institute of Water Modeling, Bued DZ from Bangladesh Agriculture Research Institute and Bangladesh Water Development Board, uh, Bangladesh Space Research and Remote Sensing Organization and Bangladesh uh, Department of Meteorology uh, were directly engaged for, uh, to, make the, to make this conference successful. And from ad, uh, abroad, uh, Rajasthan, Central Rajasthan University and uh, our uh, moderator of this session, he is also from Central Rajasthan University and Jawaharlal Nehru University, Kyoto University of Japan, uh, Kagawa University of Japan, Chikubin University of Nepal, and some other organization, uh, for example, Isimud, IMD, RIMES, uh, WMO, or th that means World Metallurgical Organization, and IITM also directly support this seminar from my end, I would like to offer thanks to all the organizations, all the institute who convey their support to make this seminar successful. And offering you thanks uh, again, I would like to conclude. 
my talk here. Thank you all. Thank you, respected Professor Dr. A.S.M. Maksud Kamal, sir, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, University of Dhaka, for the wonderful speech. Now, I would like to uh, request Honorable Chair and Co Chair to conduct the session uh, until the end. Thank you all. Okay, um, thank you, David. Uh, all the three presentations uh, allotted to this session are completed. Question and answer session is also complete. So maybe we can have some brief discussion on three papers uh, of this session. Uh, as I recall, the first paper was uh, presented by uh, Mr. Raghunandan Raman on extreme rainfall over Dhaka. And I understand uh, Raghu is a very young gentleman. He's just studying his 12th standard in the school. So despite his young age and you know, just studying in the school, he has made a very good effort in making this uh, analysis of the extreme rainfall over Dhaka. So we definitely like to congratulate uh, Ravanandan for that. Uh, from the science point of view, basically that is a statistical analysis of the extreme rainfall over Dhaka. Uh, from the perspective of forecasting, we think about because especially I myself, uh, you know, is a person of NWP, the numerical weather prediction and modeling. So I always tend to visualize everything in terms of how we can contribute to the forecasting of this extreme rainfall event. And as you know, the rainfall is a product of the complex dynamical processes atmosphere. So, I mean, I have somehow, you know, some kind of a feeling deep inside that you now, just making a statistical analysis uh, using you know, a long period of data alone is not enough uh, because there is a limit of predictability you know, in the atmosphere. And the, predict the predictability limit you know, always restricts us from making a very long-term prediction of such things. So yes, I mean, on the average state, we can do that, but uh, uh, we are more interested in like, you know, instantaneous values or maybe, you know, uh, uh, um, on a particular day or a particular location. So such kind of things are not so easy to get from the uh, statistical prediction. That is my you know, personal opinion on that. Uh, similarly, the second paper was by Wing Commander Manjila Rezwan, and she did some threat analysis of cyclone, cyclonic storm over Bay of Bengal. Well, this is an interesting study uh, well, now the cyclone prediction has improved so much you know, in the last one and a half decades or so uh, because of mainly, in my opinion, mainly because of the uh, improvement in the models, uh, especially the NWP models, uh, the data assimilation techniques, uh, the data observation technology, all these things have contributed so much in prediction of the cyclone. Uh, and so again, uh, well, simple threat analysis is fine, but what is more important is that how precisely we can predict the track of the cyclone, the point of the landfall, and the time of the landfall. These are the three critical things which government wants or the public wants. And these things have to be precisely because as you know, now also in Bangladesh as well as in India, when there is a lack of a cyclone threatening to hit the land, then the people in the coastal area are evacuated. Evacuated to a safe place. And there's a cost involved in that. There's a cost involved in the evacuation, right? Even per square kilometer, if we calculate precisely, there's a cost involved in evacuation of the people per square kilometer. 
over the coastal region. That means we have to have an accurate prediction to that extent. In other words, if our prediction of the landfall time or landfall point is an error, then we will have to pay extra money for the cost of evacu evacuation. Because it might so happen that we may evacuate people from a place where the cyclone has not hit. Whereas another place where the cyclone has hit, people are not evacuated. So that means the point of landfall prediction is very, very crucial, very, very important. And so in the time of prediction, how long we will confine or feed the people in a, in a cyclone center? Right? Because everything involves cost. So we have to think in, in those angles, right? The third presentation was on interannual variability of monsoon onset and withdrawal by Dr. Carlos Montes. Well, very interesting statistical analysis. But again, you know, I tend to visualize it from the dynamical point of view. I mean, just thinking that you now, if there is an early onset, there will be a early withdrawal, or if there is a uh, uh, or vice versa. I think that will lead us nowhere. And he has also found that you know, there is no correlation probably in the date of onset and the date of you know, withdrawal. So everything has to be visualized in a wholesome aspect as a complete dynamical system. And so we need to rather improve the models, the, the techniques of you know, uh, uh, NWP, the assimilation of data, how good the data is, uh, the quality of the data, uh, the frequency of assimilation, and all the things you now matter a lot in forecasting uh, these things. So this is what is my uh, feeling. Uh, now I would like to uh, request the co-chair, uh, Dr. Najmul Hassan, right? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, actually, uh, I want to say a few things. Uh, first of all, I like to thank the uh, three presenters, uh, out of which uh, the first uh, one, uh, Mr. Rogunandan Ramon, he is the youngest uh, uh, presenter maybe uh, in this uh, conference. Uh, he uh, carried out uh, very excellent work uh, using uh, nine model for the uh, for the extreme rainfall e events and second uh, presenter uh, uh, second presenter uh, uh, she presented the paper on threat analysis of tropical cyclone development over the bay of bengal during southwest monsoon uh, i also like to thank uh, her uh, actually, uh, she used a very long-term data uh, for uh, her analysis uh, and also uses uh, uh, eight cases uh, for the analysis. Uh, our third uh, pre presenter, uh, uh, Dr. Carlos Montes, uh, he presented the inter-annual variability of monsoon onset and withdrawal in Bangladesh, and uh, this is a very burning issue and related to our agriculture. And our uh, economy is dependent on agriculture. So onset and withdrawal uh, uh, is very related to the agricultural point of view. And uh, um, he also analyzes uh, 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 using the data 1981 to 2018, and uh, also show the relation with the uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation and Indian uh, Ocean Dipole also. So I think it's from the point of uh, view, his uh, analysis is very excellent. So I like to thank the uh, presenter and also uh, I like to thank the organizer uh, of the conference uh, to organize uh, such a, a successful uh, e event. And uh, we hope uh, that uh, the Department of Meteorology we will organize uh, this type of uh, conference in future also. Uh, uh, so uh, this is all. Uh, I request you to conclude the session. Thank you. 
thank you dr najmul uh, i think uh, we have come to the end of this session and uh, i definitely like to thank the organizers uh, for conducting uh, the two days conference uh, so nicely and everything has gone on time and uh, i am hearing all the appreciation from all angles so we'd like to thank the organizers and for giving us the opportunity also for sharing this session so thank you very much and i think uh, thank you sir thank late, you so we would not like to hold on too much uh, uh, so we proceed for the next uh, program javed on to you thank you sir on behalf of the organizing committee and department of meteorology i would like to thank honorable chair and co-chair for conducting the session and all the presenters for their wonderful presentation at this moment of the session i would like to request professor dr deon abdul kadir senior meteorologist to deliver the concluding remarks professor dr deon abdul kadir the chief guest of this session has already spoke uh, the honorable pro vice chancellor professor dr a s n masood kamal uh, and uh, professor dr tahid rashid chairman department of meteorology chairs co chairs conference advisors and participants assalamu alaikum and very good evening to everybody it is my pleasure that the two day conference on meteorology and climate science organized by the department of meteorology has come to an end this is the concluding session i take the opportunity to express my regards to the pro vice chancellor for being with us and make the conference a successful one the conference had nine sessions with 43 technical papers which covers the area of monsoon variability and monsoon mechanism local severe storms thunderstorms hail storms and lightning meteor meteorological technology including satellite technology lightning lightning monitoring system and forecasting radar technology agro hydro meteorology weather and flood forecasting climate change modeling vegetation study with ndvi level rise and so on the department of meteorology had 14 papers most of the papers were presented by the students based on their msc research work the presentations and the discussions were very thoughtful and lively the present uh, the pre presentations uh, came up with science of weather and uh, climate of the present and future it was found that the monsoon circulation uh, and associated rainfall will increase in the future the sea level are expected to increase all the papers were of immense scientific value for the applications uh, for weather prediction climate and climate projections the papers have produced new understanding of meteorology and climate science i understand uh, the integration and ties among uh, have been further uh, have further been strengthened among the meteorologist and climate scientist uh, of the world which will enhance the regional and global collaboration among the meteorological scientists from the deliberations and discussions on the on the papers it came out that collaboration among the relevant institutions at home and abroad is inevitable for maintaining high level of education and research 
one of the major limitation of research is in forecasting the weather and disasters uh, applicable in different uh, services is the lack of data. Does it is necessary to establish dense meteorological network in the hot spots, hot spot areas for which the international collaboration should be strengthened, especially for monitoring and predicting the monsoons, tropical cyclones, major scale systems, such as thunderstorms, heavy rainfall and lightning. Research ought to be strengthened in the areas of climate change and its impacts, which need high power computer. I, need, I think more such conferences ought to be conducted, uh, which not only uh, bring the world meteorologist closer, but the progress of knowledge development will be faster. With these words, I express my sincere regards and compliments to the Pro Vice Chancellor and all uh, participants of the conference, conference advisors, chairs, and co-chairs, whose contributions are highly valuable for conference to be successful. Here, I conclude my speech. Good evening to all. Thank you, Professor Dr. Deon Abdul Qadir, Senior Meteorologist, for the concluding remarks. Now, I would like to request Shourav De Shubo, Member Secretary of this conference and lecturer, Department of Meteorology, University of Dhaka, to deliver the vote of thanks. Shourav De Shubo. Yeah, thank you, Javed, for your ever serene voice. So this is uh, the end of this uh, conference. Uh, just bear with me for a couple of minutes. So I'd like to start the vote of thanks, uh, my vote of thanks speech or uh, presentation by thanking all the uh, partners and collaborators of the Department of Meteorology. Uh, especially the World Bank and also the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change uh, for the People's uh, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, and also the collaborators uh, uh, and also the University of Dhaka, obviously, and also the collaborators uh, who we work with closely with, uh, especially Bangladesh Meteorological Department, uh, Department of Agricultural Extension, and also uh, some of the uh, renowned universities around the world, especially Reading University from United Kingdom and University of Nebraska Lincoln, USA, and also Central University of Rajasthan, uh, India, and uh, Trivon University, Nepal. So this uh, vote of thanks uh, uh, speech, uh, I'd like to start by uh, showing you uh, some of the members of the organi organizing committee you have uh, heard uh, in these two days uh, from some of them, but haven't got to see all of them. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly scroll through. And also just to uh, mention that uh, uh, Professor Dr. Tawid Rashid was uh, the chairperson of the Department of Meteorology, is the conference convener, and also uh, Professor Dr. Dayan Abdul Qadir uh, was also the honorable member of this committee. And uh, Dr. Mohammed Anazmul Hassan is uh, also another member. Uh, Professor Dr. H.M.M. Tariq Hussain uh, is also another member of this committee. I also had uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed uh, Majal Alam Sharkar, uh, another member. And uh, Mr. Mohammed Sultan Masum is also another member of the committee. And I was the conference member secretary, as mentioned. 
And in our advisory committee, we had uh, some of the renowned uh, persons from home and abroad, and uh, Professor Dr. Mohammed Kausar Ahmed, uh, the Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Art and Environmental Sciences, University of Dhaka. And also we had the, the chairman of the uh, Department of uh, Geography and Environment, Professor Dr. Nul Islam Najem, uh, served with us. And also had the director, honorable director of the Institute of Water and Flood Management, Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology, Buit, Professor Dr. M. Shahjan Mondal. Also, we had the, the director general of uh, Bangladesh Water Development Board, uh, Engineer M. Aminul Haq. Uh, Director General of uh, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute, Dr. Mohammad Nadir Islam, uh, the Honorable Director of Bangladesh Meteorological Department, Mr. Samsuddin Ahmed, the Honorable uh, Chairman of Bangladesh uh, Space Research and Remote Sensing Organization, Mr. Mijanur Rahman. Uh, it, it's part of, the, of our advisory committee. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, in our advisory committee, we had some uh, distinguished personnel uh, from around the world. And some of them are as shown here. Professor Dr. Yusim Mohanty sir was uh, with us. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't join the technical session. Uh, but uh, Professor Dr. Hiroiko Ishikawa from Kyoto University of Japan was also in this uh, advisory committee. Professor Dr. A.P. Dimri from Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi, India was also in this uh, advisory committee with us. And Airways uh, Marshal Retired Professor Dr. Uh, Ajit Tiagi sir was uh, Honorable member of this advisory committee, uh, Dr. Laxman Singh Rathor, uh, sir, was uh, is a member of this uh, advisory committee. Uh, Professor Dr. Deepak Karyal, sir, Professor Toru Terao, sir, uh, Dr. Gulam Rasul, sir, and uh, Honorable Professor Dr. Somashwar Das, sir, and Dr. Milin Majinder, sir, and the, the Dr. G. Srinivasan, sir, was also is also the a member of the. Uh, 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 advisory committee. And uh, in this, uh, uh, the technical sessions, we nine technical sessions, uh, actually 10, we had to split uh, technical session three into two particular technical sessions. We had some of the renowned uh, personnel from home and abroad uh, as uh, honorable chair and honorable co-chair. I'd like to express my gratitude to them, but especially now I'd like to thank uh, two very, uh, two of the most important person to, uh, uh, for this uh, conference. Uh, Mr. Khan Mohammed Gulam Rabban, he was actually the man behind the machine, uh, regulated all the sessions uh, wonderfully. And Mr. Javed Miandad was an excellent, excellent, excellent anchor for this uh, uh, conference. And I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to the staffs and uh, all the members associated with the Department of Meteorology, uh, especially Mr. S.M. Akram Khan, Mr. Mofizul Alam Shumon, Mr. Dalimia, Mr. Alamin, and Mr. Mahmoudur Rahman Rani for their help and support. And, and also all the participants at the conference and all the audiences who joined. Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, uh, we had uh, in those uh, 10 or nine technical sessions, we had participations of more than 500 in this uh, uh, conference, uh, two days event. So I'd like to express my gratitude to all of them. So now that it's in the history book, so what's next? I mean, we should not stop here and we won't stop here. So I'd like to announced that uh, this uh, international conference on meteorology and climate science will not be a one-off event. And the next year, as you can see, we have redmarked the date already for from today. It's uh, December 10 and 11 into 2021. So with that, I conclude my vote of thanks speech, but don't go away. You just have to turn on your video because we'd like to take a photo if you permit. So please everyone turn on your video. And yes, will uh, the I am asking all the members of the organizing committee to join me. And also I'm asking Rabbani to give it in a gallery mode. So you just have to remove me from spotlight.
Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, madam. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank Second you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you Abdul, Mr. Abdullah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for mm -hmm. doing it so nicely. <laughs> so thank you, Professor Mandal. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>